Hello folks, Manito here, I hope you're doing good. In this video, I'll be showing you how to back up your Nintendo Switch save data to your SD card with the JKSV. JKSV is a save manager for the Nintendo Switch by JDK. With the JKSV, you can dump and restore account save data, save data shared by all users, system data, and more. This is great if you're moving software between modded consoles, or between MUMMC and SysNAND, or if you want a way to modify your own save data. This is also a way to finally back up save data for Pokemon games, Animal Crossing, and any other game save data that is not currently supported by Nintendo Switch Online. Now here's a few disclaimers and things to take note of before we get started. In this tutorial, and in all of my other tutorials unless stated otherwise, I'll be using a Windows PC for the computer sections. You can still follow along if you're using another OS, but some steps may be a little different. Next, you'll need a modded switch running Atmosphere Custom Firmware. If you don't have a modded switch, check out my noob friendly guide in the description. It goes over the basics of setting up SysCFW. There's also info on setting up MUMMC if you're interested. Now regarding the Wi-Fi safeness of restoring save data, it's safe to do for the most part. Restoring old or modified save data for offline games is fine, but for games that have online multiplayer, I would do some research to see if that's okay. For example, I would advise against giving yourself max ranking on games like Splatoon 2. Yes, you can do that through save data editing. Why? Because... Nintendo. <laughs> also, this guide is covering how to backup and restore save data. I won't be showing how to edit save data to give yourself more rupees, bananas, or infinite one-ups. Each save file for each game is different, so if you'd like to edit your save data, you will need to research for game-specific save editing programs. Last but not least, make sure you have at least enough storage for your backed up saves on your SD card. This varies between games of course, since game saves have differing sizes. Game saves are typically between a few megabytes or kilobytes to several hundred, and a few games, like Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition, even reserve a few gigabytes for save data. So yes, make sure you have enough storage on your SD card. And that's all you'll need to know before setting up JKSV. Before we get started, make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell to stay notified of future videos, streams, and to support the channel. I noticed most of you that watch these videos are sadly not subscribed, so please subscribe and help build up the channel even more. Thank you for your support. I also have a growing community Discord server where you can join to talk with me and other members of the community. Now, let's get started with the setup of JKSV. Connect your Switch SD card to your PC. I'll be connecting via FTP, wireless file transferring, to move files to my SD card. Open up your browser and search up JKSV GitHub. Click here, JDK, JKSV, JK's Save Manager, Switch Edition. Huge shout out to JDK for creating this save manager, and for those credited here. As the GitHub says here, this started off as a simple port of the 3DS version of JKSV. This has a lot of features, and I definitely recommend that you read through this section before messing with anything. Scroll up, and click Releases. As usual, the latest release will always be at the top of the page. At the time of recording, the latest version was released on November 5th, 2024. If there's a higher version when you are following this guide, that's okay. Always go with the latest release. I recommend taking a look at the patch notes here too. There can be useful info in here. For example, a few things that stick out to me. With this release, the developer included a zip with his preferred configuration settings whenever he uses JKSV. And it even mentions how JKSV should be exited with the plus button. There's even a written guide on the JKSV settings menu. More on that later. So yes, it's always worth taking a quick look at the patch notes. 
Now, there are two options, JKSV NRO, the homebrew app itself, and JKSV.zip. The zip, as I mentioned earlier, includes JDK's, the developer's, preferred configuration settings. For this video, I'll be using the NRO. The choice is up to you for whichever you'd like to use. Click the NRO to download it. And move it to the switch folder on the root of your SD card. I already have JKSV on my switch, so it's asking if I'd like to replace it. If you were to update to a newer version of JKSV, you would overwrite the old file, as I'm doing here. If you downloaded the zip, you would open it, extract it, and drag the config and switch folders to the root of your SD card here. I already dragged the NRO over, and I'm not going to use JDK's configuration settings, so I'll be closing it. Now, open up the JKSV settings options guide here. Leave it for now and move over to the switch. Make sure you have Atmosphere Custom Firmware running. I transferred using FTP, so I'm good to go. Open up the homebrew menu via Title Takeover. This is when you hold R while opening up a game. Now navigate to JKSV and select it. It may take a moment to load. There we go. If you only wanted help setting up the app, you're good to go. If you would like to see a small breakdown on how to use this app, and even how to install other users' save data, continue watching. Now before I show off how to use JKSV, move down to Settings, and press A. There are quite a few settings here that you can configure as you'd like. The GitHub page I opened up here breaks down what each setting does. You can leave the settings alone if you don't care to mess with anything. That's what I'll be doing. Now, head back up, and from here you'll see users on the left, and games each user has save data for on the right. Pressing A on a user allows you to browse their titles. Press back and pressing Y will dump save data for all users. X opens up a submenu with options for the currently highlighted user. You can dump all of your save data for a specific user, create save data, which allows you to create save data for a specific game or all games currently downloaded, even if you've never opened them with the selected user. And you can delete all save data for the user. Selecting a user with A grants you different options. Pressing L and R moves you through the game's list faster. Pressing Y will favorite a game and move it to the top of the list. You can even press X to open up a submenu with options for that specific game. Something pretty useful here is the information section. You can see the title of the game, the publisher, even your playtime. What stands out to me is the title ID section, as this is a useful way to get a title ID for a game if you want to add mods to it. Now, select a game. I'll be using Skyward Sword HD as an example in this video. Here's my current save on Skyward Sword HD. I know, I know. Dang, Manito, it's been out for years and you still haven't completed it? Yeah, I haven't completed it yet. <laughs> it's a great game and I played through it a few times back on the Wii, but I still haven't finished it on the Switch yet. Anyways, I have it favorited with Y, and I'll select it with A. On this submenu, you can restore, delete, and even upload your save data if you have that configured. More info on uploading will be on the GitHub. I want to back up my save data, so I'll select New Backup. It'll open up the Switch keyboard, and from here you can name it whatever you'd like. I'll leave the name as is, and press plus to continue. Dang, that was fast. <laughs> Dumping your save data can take a few seconds to a few minutes. As I mentioned earlier, save data can be between a few kilobytes to a few gigabytes. If you're dumping save data for a game like Minecraft, it'll take a few minutes if you have a lot of worlds and resource packs. Now, press plus to safely close JKSV, and connect to your SD card. 
Now if you only wanted a brief example of how to dump your save data, then you're good to go. For this final section of the video, I'll now show you an example of how downloading and restoring save data from other users. You can find save data uploaded by other users on this GBA temp page. GBA temp is an online community centered on gaming and is a great resource for finding new homebrew and mods for the Switch and other consoles. GBA temp even has a section dedicated to user uploaded game saves for Switch and other consoles. I'll leave a link to this page in the description. For this example, I'll be using the 100% save data for Skyward Sword HD uploaded by Shadow1333. Now, I'll download the save, extract it, and set it aside for now. Open up the JKSV folder on the root of your SD card. If you're using FTP like me and it's not here, click refresh if that's an option in your FTP browser. Open it up, and in here you'll see folders with the dumped save data for your games. I have Minecraft, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and Skyward Sword HD. Minecraft and Kirby are here because I've done some save editing with those games before. Now open up Skyward Sword HD and you'll see the dumped save. Open it again and you'll see what the save files look like. It's now time to import the 100% save file. To do this, I'll head back to the Skyward Sword at HD folder. If I open up the 100% save data folder that I set aside a moment ago, you'll see that the files are named the same as my own save game dump. Whenever you're importing saves, make sure it's in the same format as your dumped save, with similar file names. The folder containing the save data can be named whatever. Now, I'll move the SSHD folder here to the Skyward Sword HD folder on my SD card. There we go. Now that it's here, I'll open up JKSV again, select Skyward Sword HD, and restore the new save data. All day to confirm. And success! JKSV even created a backup of my save data for me since that setting is enabled. Now press plus to safely exit JKSV and it's time to open up Skyward Sword HD and see the new save data. Ho 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 yeah! Look at that. Shout out again to Shadow1333 for uploading the save data. If you haven't played Skyward Sword HD, I highly recommend it. Really good game. Now I can of course go back to JKSV and restore my old save data. And it made another backup. I think I'm going to turn off that option. <laughs> There we go, old save data restored. That is going to be all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe for more content. Huge shout out again to JDK and all those involved in the making of JKSV. And shout out to my channel members, thank you so much for your support, and thank you, yes you, for watching until the end. On the left you'll see a playlist for my Switch modding tutorials, definitely recommend that. And on the right, a video that YouTube recommends for you. Have a good day, good night, whatever time you're watching this, and God bless. See ya. Fox Christie.